In this video, we will discuss the pathological features of all types of cardiomyopathies. You know that cardiomyopathy is a disease of heart muscle itself that can result in heart failure. And depending upon the pathological features, it can be divided into three types. Dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and restrictive cardiomyopathy. So let's start with dilated cardiomyopathy. In dilated cardiomyopathy, you see dilation of all chambers of heart. And along with this, there is thinning of walls. Now, here the walls are becoming thin not due to atrophy of muscle cells. Rather, they become thin due to dilatation of heart that stretches the walls of hearts. Now, for this to understand, you can imagine that if you take a thick elastic band and stretches it to some extent, that the thickness of the stretched elastic band will be less as compared to the original unstretched band. Similarly, in dilated cardiomyopathy, the dilation of all chambers of heart results in thinning of walls of heart. So you see, dilation of all chambers along with thinning of walls. Now on microscopic picture, you will see some myocytes to be hypertrophied. Now the question arises that why the walls of ventricle are thin and myocytes are hypertrophied simultaneously because this appears to be a paradox. But the answer to this is simple and that is, the walls are becoming thin due to stretch onto them caused by large size chambers. But the individual myocytes undergo hypertrophy as a compensatory mechanism to the pump to pump the blood effectively from a volume overloaded heart. The second feature on microscopic picture is that you will see that most myocytes are stretched or irregular and you will also see areas of fibrosis. So you see hypertrophy of myocytes, you see stretched or irregular myocytes and you see areas of fibrosis. Now in some cases of dilated cardiomyopathy that are secondary to iron overload. There is deposition of iron in myocardial cells in form of hemosiderin. This hemosiderin can be stained by a special stain known as Prussian blue stain. Now let's come towards the pathological features of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. In hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, you see a pattern of hypertrophy in which only the thickness of interventricular septum is increased and the lateral or free walls of left ventricle are not affected. Such hypertrophy is called asymmetric septal hypertrophy because it is only involving the septum. Now also have a look on the picture of only one half of the heart. This is left atrium, this is left ventricle and this is aorta. Now you can appreciate that here due to the massive thickness of septum, the cavity of left ventricle becomes banana like in shape. Such cavity is known as banana like cavity. So in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, you see asymmetric septal hypertrophy and you see banana like cavity of left ventricle. Now on microscopic view, you will see hypertrophy of myocytes with increased size and enlarged nuclei that are called hyperchromatic nuclei. And along with this, you will also see interstitial fibrosis that causes disarray or disarrangement of myocytes. So you see myocytes hypertrophy and you see interstitial fibrosis causing disarray of myocytes in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Now let's come to the pathological features of restrictive cardiomyopathy. In restrictive cardiomyopathy, there is restriction to the filling of ventricles. So the structure of ventricles is unaffected. But as ventricles are restricted to receive the blood from atria, so as a result, atria become dilated. So in restrictive cardiomyopathy, you see normal sized ventricles and you see dilated atria. In microscopic view, you will see interstitial fibrosis and along with it, you will see signs of underlying pathology. Such as if restrictive cardiomyopathy is caused by Loeffler's myocarditis or if it is caused by eosinophilia, you will see eosinophils in myocardium. And if restrictive cardiomyopathy is caused by amyloidosis, you will see amyloid deposition in myocytes. This concludes our discussion on cardiomyopathies.